It will, you'll feel it. I think I got lucky when I started working on this. I thought this is going to really be difficult. And I sent a few upstairs and uh, it worked out. G'day folks, it's DIY Guy123 here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. Today, we've got a really weird problem. This is a 2015 Hyundai Elantra with the two liter GDI engine. So this is throwing a P0191 and a P0193. And both of those codes are related to the fuel rail pressure sensor. So here's the deal, when I'm driving the vehicle, it doesn't always set a check engine light. Second thing is, even when it's not setting a check engine light, when it shifts, it shifts rough. It shifts kind of weird and then it will buck when you're just idling, like going along it, like say 20% throttle on a flat, like if you're sort of coasting, but with maybe a little bit more throttle than coasting, it will, you'll feel it uh, at like 50 or 60 kilometers an hour. So with the P codes, it is a dead giveaway where you should start. Now, if you have a fuel pressure problem, it could be any number of things. It could be the filter that's in the tank, low pressure fuel pump in the tank, the high pressure fuel pump on the top of the engine, very expensive. You don't want it to be either one of the fuel pumps, especially that one, a fuel pressure regulator or fuel rail pressure sensor itself could be faulty or wiring could be faulty in any of those systems. Given the P codes that were set, I zeroed on on the fuel rail pressure sensor. And in order to get at it, the manual says you gotta take the intake off. Now, when you take the intake off, it's pain, you're breaking a bunch of gaskets, you probably have to put new gaskets on it. Whole lot of work, don't wanna do that. And I could actually see the pressure sensor. There it is right there on the fuel rail. So I thought, gee, if I could get the alternator out of here, I could get access to that. And so I did take the alternator out. There's a bolt on the alternator that comes out here. And then there's another one that is connected to the alternator belt tensioner. And so I put took that bolt out and I released the tensioner first and then I could get the belt off, unplug the alternator wire harness and tuck it out of the way and get the alternator out of there. Then I could get the fuel rail pressure sensor. I got the connector off and it has three pins in the connector. And I kind of automatically assumed it was the pressure sensor. To be honest with you, I was just like, oh, it's probably that. I read a bunch of stuff online, said it's usually that. But I thought, I'm just going to check the wire harness. And so what we have here is the, this is the connector that was on the fuel rail pressure sensor. And it has three wires in it, a red, a pink, and a brown. They don't line up with what the manual says is in the wiring harness. However, I did check and found that this connector on the ECM, the one on the right, is the one that we are interested in. And I flipped it over. I'm not gonna manipulate it because you just, with 100 wires per connector, you don't wanna be fiddling with this any more than you need to. So I looked up in the wiring diagram and found the three wires that go to this connector that match up with the three wires that go to that connector. And then I did a resistance test. And while I was doing it, I was uh, shaking the wires just gently, not so much up here. I really don't believe there's much that can go wrong with this very well bound harness. But down here, neither heat near the heat of the engine, the vibration of the engine. What I've got here is I've got a multimeter in the ohm reading. The red lead goes up to here, to this little jumper, to a sewing pin that goes up into pin 27, and that one is rail pressure signal sensor, pin 27. And then down here, it's the middle, uh, middle pin in this connector. And you'll see I have 1.5 ohms. Now, that's, no, that's great. The 1.5 ohms is due to these leads, and there would be some resistance expected. Okay, so 1.5 ohms. Now, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna move, so so we have this connector here, which connects, which has this little uh, bound up set of three wires, and they go kind of that way. Then they get into this bigger wire harness here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna just with my finger, move it like this. Gonna pull it, and the resistance goes sky high for a minute. There, I found a sweet spot. Found a sweet spot right there, it's open circuit. And watch when I push this. That meter's gonna change its reading. And there, I just touched it. So, oh, it's back to open again. So we've got a broken wire in there somewhere. There are two ways to fix this. 
One is we can chase this loom down to another connector, open it up and try to decide if the, if the harness is broken here or if it's broken further down, or maybe it's just a corroded connector. That's the proper way to do it, but it's gonna require digging in down there. I don't know where I'm gonna get access and what I won't get access to. So the other option, which is probably what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slice this wire harness right here open. I'm gonna tap into that line. I'll run a piece of wire somewhere, 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 and I'll tap into this and splice it. And then we will have proper continuity to that plug. Now, not claiming that's the proper repair, but it's going to get this vehicle going without a huge ordeal and replacing a wire harness. Uh, that wire harness is not particularly long, but you have to take the intake off to get at it, and I don't want to do that. Okay, quick update. I still stand by what I said. Sometimes you got to patch and not change a whole wire harness, but I do want to point out, I've, I've learned that this harness right here, this wire loom, goes down and right underneath the intake, there's a connector with another part of the wire harness that goes off to the, to the ECM. That harness or that connector, the two connectors, the male and the female, I'm not certain, but when I squeeze them, it's like they kind of maybe move together a little bit. I did hear a click and I can no longer, even if I'm moving this wire harness way more than I ever was before, I can no longer get that line to go open circuit. So, you know, it, I thought it was a broken wire, but now I think it was probably just a loose connector or a corroded connector. In either case, by me manipulating it, it, it caused continuity to be there. Now, I wouldn't just say, oh, this car's fixed forever, don't worry about it, without actually taking that connector apart and cleaning it. But it's in a really awkward spot to get at from up above. I'd have to take the coolant tank out, which isn't a big deal. And I think maybe even taking the radiator shroud out, maybe, I'm not sure, but this is not my normal workshop. It's busy with other equipment right now. And so what I'm gonna do is get this car rolling and then the next time my hoist is free, get it up on the hoist and take the splash guard off from underneath and clean that connector properly, put dielectric grease on it and snap it together. And that should be the end of the problem. So. I think I got lucky when I started working on this. I thought this is going to really be difficult. And I sent a few upstairs and it worked out. It was an intermittent problem. And you can definitely see that when I moved the wire harness, causing the resistance to fluctuate. These electrical troubles can be really tricky, but always get a wiring diagram, study it, make sure you understand it, and then test out the continuity of the wires. And then check from uh, for any shorts from those wires to ground that shouldn't be there. So if you like the video, please subscribe. Good luck if you do it yourself. Project's the end. Hopefully this helps you.